How's it going everyone? Unretired here and today we're bringing you build update 27, the Shaman Mastery, Shaman class. Alright, so without further ado, let's uh, take a look at the skill tree. Uh, first off, as you can see, I do have a, a new pet here, the Briarthorn. It is part of the Shaman class, so let's take a look here. So what I'll do is I'll um, basically show you what the first skill and the additional skills and what it adds. And I'll give my opinion at the end um, and tell you what kind of builds would be preferable for what kind of characters. All right, so let's uh, start off. So first skill here is Devouring Swarm. Uh, so it does add vitality damage, bleeding damage per second, and the attack damage is converted to health. It minuses out vitality resistance and bleeding resistance to the mobs at the same time this is a very overpowered skill but don't get me wrong it is very enjoyable to see the mobs just disappear and, and melt away it's very good i love it <coughs> excuse me next up we have savagery so savagery is a uh, a buff that you add on hit so the more you hit the more you get the stack um so right now, it, and also almost all the skills are lightning and bleed damage related. So I'm just gonna go over like what it does. So it adds bleed damage, percentage of lightning damage, and a percentage of bleed damage, uh, and 100% weapon damage. Obviously that goes up as you put more points. So right as of right now, uh, one point in puts you gives you six charges. So the first charge will get 30%, 50, 65, 80, 90%, and then 100% very good uh, it's uh, more of a melee melee ish um skill but it, it's also used for casters um it's a hybrid skill i would have to say a uh, skill related to it is might of the boar uh so shaman and spirit uh, um honestly i don't know what to think about this skill it's it's a damage modifier by it it modifies your damage by three percent I, I don't think it's it's explained properly in the in the tooltip here um damage modified by three percent three percent physical resistance so uh what's modified by three percent um is it just your regular damage is it your lightning damage it's not very specific um so as of right now i would have to say skip it for the moment until i could actually test everything out uh related to this skill Related to savagery is tenacity of the boar, so it adds offensive ability, defensive ability, and health regeneration. Very good. Again, more of a melee skill. And the last skill for that one is storm touched. A Twenty percent chance of electrocute damage over th three seconds. Adds sixty percent lightning damage, physical damage percentage, and more percentage of, for a percentage of attack speed. I love the attack speed because if you put the max points you're going to be attacking so fast so if you're uh, dual wielding it is it would be very very crazy the amount of damage you'll be doing <coughs> during lightning and that physical damage at the same time and electrocute right uh, next up is brute force very simple skill you need a two-handed weapon adds lightning damage and adds a percentage of physical damage to your attacks very easy to understand Skill related to it is Feral Hunger. Again, you need that two-handed weapon, right? Uh, it's only an eight percent chance to be used. Obviously, the percentage go does go up uh, as you put more points into it. It is a hundred eighty degree arc, up to five targets. So it's an AOE skill, all right. Uh, adds bleeding damage, weapon damage, and also it does convert your attack damage to health as well. And the last one is Upheaval. So it's more of a, it's an AoE skill again, adds weapon damage, lightning damage, bleeding damage. So if you're going for a heavy melee character uh, and you want to add shaman, these uh, are very good for you. With savagery is very good for you. It just depends how you, uh, your play style on these uh, skills, okay? So next up uh, is Magdroden's. Madrogan's Pact. So it is a, a self ability and you must toggle it for it to, uh, to be active. So it's health regeneration and energy re regeneration. Um, if you're getting hit very, very heavily, 
I, I don't think this will help very very much however in group play where you can back away um, I find it that, that would be useful so yeah 12 points into that uh, it would add a substantial amount of uh, regen to your character skill related to that is heart of the wild adds health percentage uh, resistant uh, duration reduction for poison and bleeding uh, very good if you know that you're going to be encountering mobs that do a lot of bleed damage and poison damage and the last skill for it is oak skin um, oak skin is more of a uh, retaliation build skill uh, that i would personally use it adds armor pierce resistance and 10 percent total retaliation damage so imagine if you put max points into this let's say for the build that i have for re uh, retaliation build um, nothing would basically survive after you get touched once or twice almost so this is a must-have skill if you're going retaliation right uh, and next up so okay we have grasping vines very straight up it's a cc ability it adds a bit of dam physical damage bleed damage it slows your target movement for one second um 30 percent chance obviously uh, 30 percent slower target movement sorry not chance for one second it's not too bad the other skill related to is entangling vines physical damage bleed damage immobilizes your target slows your target a bit more uh this adds th it is so so i don't these these skills are so so in my opinion anyways you have to use them and see them for yourself if you love them all right next up is a primal strike is a usable ability weapon damage physical lightning and stun you gotta love the stun after it it's thundering strike thunderous strike adds more of a stun uh, it is a hundred percent skill reduction minus 60 percent skill energy cost but it you'll you'll be doing 60 percent less weapon damage um, so it's more it, it's kind of like the um, um, how do you call that skill I forget <laughs> it's one of those soldier skills anyways uh, so torrent adds weapon weapon percentage damage and a certain amount of lightning damage to your attacks and afterwards it's storm surge lightning damage again bleeding damage and a percentage of physical damage to your attacks now um, to one of my favorites and to what I'll be building towards to is the summon Briathorn so from the stats that you can see at the moment you can clearly see he, he is more of a tank he'll be your uh, meat shield right and the only skill that he does have basically at the moment is thorn claws uh, if you just decide to take this uh points into summon bright Thorn. so a lot of health uh, a lot of energy a lot of damage at the same time and the en energy regeneration rate is quite high 30 percent for four points at the moment pretty good uh the point that's related to that is ground sl ground slam so physical damage, internal trauma, which is bleed damage, and stun. I would totally put all all the points into this one. Very useful. Related to that is emboldering roar. So you know it it calls out to its allies, emboldering them with fighting is at its thickest. When fighting is at its thickest, so basically hit a roar, add physical uh, total offensive uh, offensive abilities and total damage. Sorry, not total offensive, but offensive ability and total damage. Uh, pretty good. I would add total all my points into this. All of these ones I put max points for sure. Right. Um, next up is Wind Devil. So imagine little mini tornadoes going around. So that's basically it. So physical damage, lightning damage and a chance of impaired aim to the target uh, i haven't seen this um uh, debuff before impaired aim so that's pretty new to me uh but not too bad i, I would totally try it out uh raging tempest slows target cold damage elemental resistance it's something that we've seen before not new maelstrom again it's a one target maximum uh skill so one target not multiple uh, and it probably stay that way as well because it seems a bit overpowered uh, that lightning damage and electrical damage over it over two seconds um, max points would be quite enormous now let's head up to uh, the last skills here so Wendigo Totem I see this more of a supportive 
um, skill than anything else. It adds vitality damage. Um, 2% plus 20 health restored. Um, basically, it, think of it as uh, the Shaman in World of Warcraft. You have the totem, you get bad health, some of them will do damage. This is a little hybrid totem, basically. And the skill link to it is Blood Pack. So it will add 15% vitality damage, 15% bleeding damage with 6% increased duration, plus 15% vitality decay, and 33% chance of, of a 5% chance of attack damage converted to health. I would totally put just maybe one point into this and max points into Blood Pack. Uh, but then again, this will be have to this will have to be tested out to see if it's actually viable in certain uh, melee and or a uh, caster builds. The uh, last skills uh, are Storm Totem. Uh, channeling the power of a storm is one of the most sacred rights of the Stormcaller. Uh, so basically, it'll probably just do light, doing lightning damage. <coughs> uh, two targets. Not too bad, I guess. Um, if you put in points into Corrupted Storm, 100% lightning damage converted to vitality damage. So you can probably put one point into here, max points in to Blood Pack, one point Storm Totem, and other points into Corrupted Storm, and you got yourself some vitality damage uh, totems. And, which would not be too bad for a exactly what I, what I have here, Occultist and Shaman build. And the last three skills are Storm Collars Pact. Um, so exclusive, the exclusive skill is basically you can only have one of the exclusive skills active. You can only have one. You can't have both active. You can only have one. So you can either have Storm Collars Pact, uh, which will add lightning damage, crit damage, chance of lightning damage, percentage damage, frost damage, electrocute damage, and physical damage converted to lightning damage. Uh, seems quite amazing. This is something I'll have to try out for myself. The other exclusive one is Primal Bond. So Primal Bond is just like the one from Occultist. Well, it's not exactly like the one for Occultist, but it's a Bond. So just like the Occultist one, it adds 12, plus 12% 12 health regen. This one adds plus total damage plus health. Um, plus it adds the uh, damage absorption, physical damage, bleeding damage, so on and so forth. So those are the two exclusive ones. And the last one is the Conjure Primal Spirit. Um, so it, it's only a 20 second summon. However, uh, from what you can see, Stardust health is 2700, which is pretty good. Uh, physical damage and bleeding damage uh, for Fang, Claw and Fang attacks uh, is quite on par for probably a level 1 summon, I guess. And the Tail Strike, 60, 76 to 85 pierce damage, poison damage, and stun over 3 seconds. Um, if you're going somewhere in your build, I would get this one, but, um, I would, you know, I would, just to try it out, and if you don't like it, just take it off, um, because you can always have a Briathorn, you can have your Raven, your, your Familiar, sorry, I just called it the Raven, and you can have your Hellhound. So, that is pretty much it for the skills, guys. Um, I'm quite impressed as of right now, um, for the Shaman, I was kind of burnt out with the game. Uh, but as soon as the update came out, I was very excited to uh, to to, tr to try it out. I, as you can see, look look at that, how it, everything is melting away. You just add everything. <laughs> look at that. What was that? Not even a minute. Not too bad. Three pets. Overpowered skill. God, I love shaman. Hope you liked the video guys, don't forget to subscribe, uh, do leave your comments what kind of builds you'll be using the Shaman for, and I'll check them out, and uh, do check out my new level 50 uh, Warder build that I have linked at the same time, and as of right now, I'll see you guys in the next video.